All right. Well, this is our quick 30-minute shoulder blade sequence that will access some stuff between the shoulder blades, the serratus, as well as the thoracic spine. So we're going to start with what I've always called V arms. It's sort of like Garudasana, but we're not going to cross the elbows. So I'm going to go in a little bit of an angle, so that might be seen better. But once you have a comfortable and useful but simple seat, we're going to take the arms forward and reach them straight ahead. And as you have this, a couple of times, we'll make that rhomboid push-up action. So I'm going to reach my arms way forward, scapular protraction, and then pull my shoulder blades back. It's like my arms appear to get shorter, scapular retraction. And we'll do that a couple of times, so pulling ahead, pulling back, pulling ahead, pulling back. And we're going to end on that protracted position. So the shoulder blades are pulling towards the front body. From there, we're going to bring the palms together. And as you can see here, as I have my arms ahead of me, I'm not angling them low. I'm not like scooping up my chest in between the upper arms. I'm clearing my chest material. And I have my arms just a little bit higher than my shoulder socket height. You could also go about at the same line, but I would aim just a little bit above. And this is the first phase of it. You're just going to press your palms together. If I kind of tuck my chin, mush my head back, I can look down the lines of my arms. And I'm going to work here to face my inner elbows exactly up towards the ceiling and then press my hands together. All right, this is just the first phase of it. Let's go ahead, inhale, exhale, release the arms down. You can make any sitting adjustments. Let's head back to it. So arms reach forward, palms come together. Palms squeeze, arms are maybe angled straight ahead of the shoulder sockets, but I think you'll have a little bit better success slightly above. All right, I'm looking at my elbows, pointing towards the ceiling. Okay, from here, bend the elbows, and you're going to work to bring the elbows as close as possible. So on some bodies, it's like a, a slight angle apart. They're not going to touch. But even if there's space between your elbows, you're trying to close it shut. You're going to squeeze the elbows together to the effect that you're trying to here ignite these pec muscles. So those borders of the chest should pop right on out. <laughs> and as you work with this, Squeezing those elbows, squeezing the palms. Could you hear, think again about scapular protraction. So as I came in and out of the pose just then, I ended up with my shoulders pulling towards each other. Oh, so I'm going to push my shoulder blades apart. It's like I'm trying to put my elbows further away from my breastbone, further across the room. Oh my goodness. All right, let's come on down. I haven't done this one in a while, <laughs> and I can feel it. It's such a good one. All right, you can always just change your seat a little bit just to give variety to the hips and legs. Let's go back at it. So reaching forward, just above the shoulders, maybe directly in front, palms together. All right, elbows bend. Elbows as close as you can get them, as simply as close as you can. Mine are touching, but even if yours had five inches of distance, you're squeezing into that five inches of distance. Okay, last phase of this. Well, I want to say one more thing. You're going to push again those forearms forward, so scapular protraction, move the shoulder blades ahead. All right, last phase. You're going to flip the palms open, so it's like you're holding a book above your brow line. And then you're going to angle the forearms apart. So you're looking at this V shape between your arms. Intense. And you're still trying to squeeze the elbows together. Again, even if they were five inches apart, they're squeezing into that space. If they're touching, they press. Oh, and could you bring the forearms any wider apart? All right. Pinkies touch, palms touch. <sighs> arms just drop. <laughs> all right, give yourself a breath or two. Um, and we're going to transition over onto an all fours pose and see if we can get those actions of shoulder blades wide when we come into some load bearing on the hands, right? So that previous exercise there, the V-shaped arms, um, you are working it. <laughs> You're working the rotation of it quite a bit, um, but you're not loaded up with weight. So this is another um, way to get some strength in there. So as I come onto my L4, I'm going to make it very typical, wrists below the shoulders, knees below the hips. Then I'm going to drop my head thoroughly and completely, and then we're going to do a couple of rhomboid push-ups. So at the bottom of it, hang. Let your shoulder blades come towards each other, but don't squeeze them in. We will in a moment, but I just want that 
touch of passive stretch. I don't know about you, but this is like a really important feeling <laughs> between my shoulder blades. It's hard to replicate this anywhere else. We're just gonna do it with the head down so there's one less thing to manage. Then as you are here for the last breath or two, begin to squeeze the shoulder blades together. Like you can get those two scaps to touch right on top of the spine. All right, head is hanging again. One less thing to manage, no neck engagement. All right, and then begin here to push the hands down, pull the shoulder blades apart, and we're gonna hold at the top of it now. I've seen so many people, when they do this top of the rhomboid push-up, they begin to put a little um, cat back, spinal flexion into it. So I'm gonna challenge you here to keep pumping those hands down, pulling the shoulder blades apart, but then kick the tailbone up by an inch, pull the sternum forward by a mile, but again, you can have the head low, just one less thing to manage, um, but no flexing of that upper back. All right, and let's go between the two points there. So dropping to the bottom, then squeeze. Push the hands, spread the shoulder blades, open the top chest forward, and then drop to the bottom, squeeze, spread the shoulder blades as you push the hands, but don't hunch the upper back. I keep lifting my chin, old habits die hard. <laughs> we'll do a couple more. So to the bottom with a little squeeze, and to the top for the broadness of the back, but also the length. And again, I keep lifting my chin. <laughs> we'll do a couple more. And don't worry about like flexion extension in the spine, like don't add that in. Worry about it if it shows up unbidden. All right. Go ahead here and stretch back to um, a child's pose. But in your child's pose, walk, crawl, slide your fingertips forward. So it's like you're reaching the arms up, like they're never satisfied. They just want to scooch forward one more time. You know, eventually at your end point, but even inside of that, you're still reaching for it. You might even gently flex the knuckles and sink your finger and thumbprints into your yoga mat like you've made like a cat-like grip. And then pull the shoulder blades down away from the neck and roll those inner elbows to face towards the ceiling. All right, you can loosen out the arms, let them drop and drape for a moment. And let's return back up to an all fours position. From this typical all fours, we're gonna make it slightly atypical. So I'd like you to walk your hands forward of being directly underneath the shoulders. This unweights the hands slightly. So we still are load bearing, but we've reduced it. And I want you to access some refinement here. So as you have this, and again, I'll go on a bit of an angle in case that's more visible on screen, sometimes is. Um, and I want you to keep your elbows straight, but roll the arms in and out a few times. So the, the hands are anchored, that's the closed chain, but you're going to roll the arms in and out. So inner elbows face forward over the fingertips, inner elbows face each other. Ooh, kind of not really, but inner elbows face the thighs. And we'll do a couple of those. And so some degree of this is just easy for you. And that's usually the rolling in part, the internal rotation for most folks. So focus on turning out and out and out and out until you feel like the back of the shoulder is implicated in that, right? So that external rotation happening from those rotator cuff muscles. But if you're just kind of swirling in the easiest zone, you might not recruit them um, in a way that makes an impact. So the next time you're turning your inner elbows to face forward, hold that. You know, notice if you're just hyperextending the elbows, you might even put like an imagined baby bend into them and still turn those inner elbows forward. All right, and then begin to turn the toes under if that's not where you've been. Sit your hips back, and so for a moment, it's like a, a little general sketch of a downward dog. So hips have moved back, thighs have moved back, but you're not quite lifted yet. And roll one more time, those shoulder blades wider apart. Roll one more time, those inner elbows to face forward and pump the hands down to pull the shoulder blades apart and then take that into what I think of as like a half dog, half plank. Maybe I'll come forward a little bit so it looks a little planky. And inside of this, you still are load bearing. You still can access some movement. So roll the inner elbows forward, pump the hands down so you're pulling the shoulder blades apart. 
And once you've been convincing of that to your shoulders and your upper back, begin to glide back towards a downward dog and be content to not go into the full depth of the posture. So as I'm here, there's something inside of me that's like, you know what, you could press the chest further back. Surely I could, but I'm gonna stay here for a moment because I feel like I really got access to my shoulders. And then we'll bring the knees down. We'll go back to a child's pose. And again, as you get into that, crawl those fingertips forward, like overstretch, even let the shoulder blades come up towards the neck. We'll invite that in. And as you have your hands really reaching forward and even the shoulder blades have lifted towards the neck, permit that, maintain it, and see if you can anchor the thumb and the index finger down on each hand, but then roll the inner elbows towards the ceiling. All right, let's come up again. So typical all fours, push the hands down, roll the inner elbows forward. Atypical all fours, have the hands come ahead. What is this? This is a little bit closer to downward dog, yeah? So we added shoulder flexion. Inner elbows forward, pump the hands down to pull the shoulder blades apart. And again, a downward dog, be content with it being like a shallower downward dog. Like in other instances, you could go pressing the chest right through, head can come closer, but I want you to find in this moment um, a downward dog that the, the priority is keeping the shoulder blades apart and the inner elbows facing more forward than not. All right, and then we'll come on down. And last time here to child's pose, we'll sit on back. We'll reach those fingers forward. This time I want you to cup your palms over the floor like you're banging madly on a piano with your fingertips. And as you have this, can you still turn those inner elbows towards the ceiling? All right, and then we'll come on down from there. So we're gonna work here on the latissimus strength. So that lat, you know, from your underarm to your sacrum on both sides, big, big muscle. So when I come down, I'm gonna use a little head support. So that way I know I'm not using my neck or like skull movements to catch any of the movements I want in the shoulders. And the bolster is your weight, <laughs> so is your weightlifting. We'll do it yoga style with a nice big soft cushion. So a little head support, I think just as easy here to keep the knees bent, feet on the floor. I think you'll be able to monitor your pelvis and spine a little bit better. And then you're gonna have the bolster over your face, reaching it up. Have this on the palms, fingertips pointing back. And we'll inhale, exhale a couple of times here. And think again about lifting the shoulder blades off the floor and then returning the shoulder blades to the floor, like you're gonna stamp your shoulder blades into your yoga mat. And then once more, lift the shoulder blades off, then again, shoulder blades down. All right, so that's that protraction, retraction, it's going to implicate your pecs, your serratus anterior, and your rhomboids. And then um, find a mid-range to that, just to kind of, you know, I don't want you to feel like one position is supreme over another. So we're gonna mid-range it. So I could lift my shoulder blades this high. It makes my neck feel a little bit on guard. And I could, clunk slam my shoulder blades into the floor. So I'm gonna find mid-range, mid-range. That's a good place to learn some tricks. And then from here, you'll begin to gently, um, slightly flex the wrists as you reach the bolster back. And the depth of it is not important. You'll find a depth and then you'll bring the bolster back up. So that's the action. We'll do a few. I won't count these off. You're just going to do some. <laughs> and what I want you to perceive here in the reaching back and the slowly dragging up is that you can figure out who's doing what and when. So as I'm in that sort of mid-range protraction, that helps me slow down the movement because as it gets heavier, as it's past like my eyebrows, um, I've got my pecs to help control this. And then I'm gonna pause when it's as far back as I wanna put it for the moment. And then the second that I wanna reverse direction, I'm going to once more think a little bit of that mid-range shoulder blade lift off the floor. Think even about the upper arms tied together with a yoga strap and getting a squeeze in. You have to create internal resistance here because 
you're likely strong enough to do this weightlifting <laughs> without having to do it in this really refined way. So when you get into any phase where you feel like you're getting a little bit ragged or faster, slow yourself down and think again about lifting those shoulder blades just slightly off the floor. All right, I'm gonna place this down for a moment, take a breath. That's always shockingly hard for my forearms and wrists. <laughs> so I'm just gonna give it an inhale and exhale. Um, so we've done the straight back. I wanna do it on slight angles, right? Cause there are a lot of yoga poses where we are just reaching straight back, but a lot of life happens on an angle. So giving a little tip of the hat towards that um, non-linear way that we tend to live. So I'm gonna start up, bolster pushing up. And again, I'm gonna look for my mid-range. I can just sink the bolster into my wrists, my wrists into my elbows, my elbows to my scaps, my scaps onto the mat. And I can overcorrect to the point where my neck feels tense. So I want that mid-range. And then I'm going to glide the bolster over towards my right. I'll try not to scrape my microphone off my face. And so as I bring this back, I'm going on a rightward angle. All right, that's a struggle. So I'm gonna make sure I've lifted that right shoulder blade in particular slightly off the floor and then bringing it to return. And again, we'll go through a few, not counting. I'd be interested here to notice if this were my own practice. One, when I was holding my breath, surely I would. <laughs> um, and two, like what my feet are doing. Am I squeezing and tucking my tailbone and am I like hardening pelvic floor? So as much as we are being, you know, laser focused to lats, pecs, serratus, rotator cuff, ugh, we also want to be able to step out a little bit and see if that's got broader implications. Again, I'm going to take a quick pause. That's always so killer for my forearms in this really surprising way. <laughs> um, and then I'll do the left side in just a sec. I'm giving it a breath. There's no prescribed number, like you have to do 10 of these to gain the benefit. I do them to the point of fatigue. Your bolster always weighs the same, so if you're doing this consistently, you might notice a, f you know, a few practices out from now that this just gets a little simpler. So I'm shifting towards the left, and I'm gonna drag this back in a leftwards preference. All right, this is my weaker side, so I've gotta lift that left shoulder blade slightly off the floor to precipitate the return movement. I'm gonna keep it slightly off the floor as I go back into it. So this is my trickier side. I'm gonna go quiet for a moment and focus on the next couple. All right, last one or two wherever you are with this. You can always catch another couple on the other side if you want to spend more time on the right. Maybe you want to give that left a last one or two. All right, and then back up to center. And then from here, um, again, a quick pause <laughs> for my forearms, my wrists. <laughs> It's a really great wrist exercise. You know, it's that load bearing that I'm after um, of that wrist extension, but it's not your body weight. And it changes, right? Like your arm angle's changing, the wrist angle changes. So it's probably something that's, we could make it a forearm focused if we wanted it to be. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go back to straight up overhead. This time I'm gonna anchor my tailbone down. So I'm gonna make sure I'm not flexing in my low back or tucking tail. And then I'm gonna take my feet together, legs together, and balance my, my legs as though I'm in um, a supta utkatasana reclined chair pose. So my, my knees over my hips, ankles in front of knees. And we'll do a couple this way to make sure that if we were recruiting something like, oh, like even the back of the knees, the hamstrings could have been doing it, or you could have been pushing, pulling with your feet. So just a little um, full body check-in. We'll just do a couple more. Ah, notice the way this will impact the pressure on your chest and abs. All right, I'm gonna go one to the right, because we're crazy like that. Oh, shoulder blade just lifting slightly off the floor, back to center. One to the left. Oh, shoulder blade slightly off the floor. Oh, and dragging that back up. <laughs> I'm bringing that on down. All right, let's be done with this one. And let's set up for 
one that has a more lengthening component around the top of the chest and pecs. Um, what I'd like us to do for that is to have this bolster that's going to be behind you. The end of it is across the bottom tips of your shoulder blades. And then you'll want some head support so the neck isn't tossed back in the effort. So I go to storage fold from the blanket and then half one time. You'll need a little elbow room for this. So if you've got objects near you, reorient. So bottom tips of the scaps at the end of the bolster, blanket for the back of the head. And then from here, arms out to the sides. With the pressure of the bolster across your back, you might feel compelled, like a lot of us yogis would, um, to really lift the chest. And what I'm going to do to kind of soothe that in my own body, when I can't overcome it all at once, is to actually lift my head a little higher. And that takes the need to arch over the bolster off of that spot on my spine. All right, so first phase of it is arms are out to the sides, easy peasy position. You don't have to stress the, the pecs yet but have everything from like the elbow to the back of the wrist on the floor and take a breath or two and drop your ribs. You don't have to actively like crunch into that the whole time, but notice if you've put them forward. Okay, then this we'll call this like phase one. So like kind of like nothing doing. <laughs> it's the check-in phase. Uh, phase two, take your arms further out to the sides. I know I'm a little bit off camera, but this is where my arms are. They're softly bent and on the floor, so that you're maybe at the first edge of a warming stretch, meaning here it comes, but it's not like the raw final edge of it. And I want you to keep everything from your elbow to the back of your wrist on the floor while you have this. Okay, so that's phase two. So phase one was nothing doing. Phase two is like, I feel you stretch. Phase three, you are in maybe the middle of it. Like you can feel from chest to chest, shoulder to shoulder, this is beginning to pull on the pecs. Okay, in this phase, and I'm just gonna call this like, you know, noticeable stretch, <laughs> mid-range stretch, meaning it could get worse, but we're not gonna try to make it much worse than this um, for the moment. What I'd like you to do is to make sure that you didn't back arch to get there, try to soften your ribs down. What I think of is like pushing my back rib cage into the end of the bolster like I could squash it flat. And while you're in this space, readjust my arms, where you are feeling like a, a, it's there, here it is, it's happening, that pec stretch, I want you to actively push your forearms into the floor. But make sure that doesn't make you pop the ribs to the ceiling. My imaginary litmus test on this is like if I came over to you and tried to lift your arm off the floor, you would, you would battle me. Um, I'd have better leverage, so I'd probably lift you up, but could you imagine here that if you had a yoga helper trying to pry your arm from the floor, it could not happen. And then reduce that, go back to just having the arms placed. I would call this passive stretching, right? And then if you add that isometric, it changes the, the loading of the muscle fibers. This is what I'm after for a lot of people these days. So I love the passive stretch, sign me up for that. But then after a few moments of it, like give it a new flavor, like put in a little extra spice. So let's go to like phase four. And you know, I'm not an aggressive practitioner, so this isn't really like, oh my God, I could go no further. It's like I'm not willing to go any further, though I'm sure someone could yank my arm further back. So this is sort of my logical endpoint for um, my shoulders. I'm going to try to compress the end of the bolster with the back of my rib cage and I'm going to push down my forearms and elbows into the ground. And sometimes when we add that little bit of spice of the isometric, something is compromised. So, so you know, no breath holding, pelvic floor squeezing, no knee squeezing. <laughs> and that's about as far back as I'm gonna take my arms. From here, I'm gonna like dial out, like soften that isometric press of the forearms down and just kind of hang in this passive position for a moment. And maybe, maybe, maybe I'd squeak out ugh, one more degree of arms reaching back. Right, that's the way I'd like you to approach it, um, bringing the arms back down to phase one where it's like nothing doing, just taking a breath. Phase two, you can begin to perceive the boundary of a stretch. Phase three, you're right in the middle of it. 
phase four, it's like that's about as far as you'd logically want to go in any given practice. And go through those with me for a moment. So phase one, arms are just close, no big deal. Phase two, can you begin to sense the approach of a stretch? I bet these boundaries change as we do this. Phase three, that's like a hearty stretch. You could stay there for a moment. You've got room on either side to be here. And then phase four would be like, that's about it. That's logical. And you'll give it a breath or two. And then bring the arms back down to phase one and press the forearms down. It's like you're about to sit up. Like you could push your elbows down and like boink yourself back up to standing. Right, phase two, you see the shape and size of a stretch, but it's not so big here, and push your forearms down. Do they push equally? Does one have more power? Phase three, right in the middle of your stretch, you can withstand it, it's sustainable, and you're gonna push the forearms down. I've gotta think a little bit more about the details of asymmetry, so I'm really putting my brain into my left side. And then phase four, like logical endpoint, no reason reason to go past this. And here, we're going to linger a little bit longer and push those forearms down. So the end range of your stretch and pushing elbows into the floor. And again, noticing, does one have more power? Standing back internally and noticing breath holding, jaw clenching, eyebrow furrowing, <laughs> toe curling, you know, all those things. All right, and then release your arms entirely on down. All right, from here, let's turn over to one side. And you might end up composing this slightly differently than I. Um, but here's my thought. I'm going to put a blanket down for my knees. That's me. That's me and my knees. And then I'm going to have this bolster go across my mat at the front. I'm going to sit on back into a child's pose. And I'm starting here. Um, with the bolster in fairly close. So I want to get my forehead to that front edge of the bolster that's closest to me. And my arms, specifically elbows, are on the bolster. And then face the palms in towards each other. So forehead supported, elbow supported. I'm going to take this all in just a smidgen closer and make that more true for me. And begin here to compress the bolster down, like smash it flat with your arms, like elbows pushing in, but arms are straight, palms are facing in. All right, and then soften that off. And then I have to do this by actually like tipping to one side, lifting an arm, flip your palms and inner elbows to face up. And again, I kind of have to shimmy to get there. It can't happen while I'm plugged in. And then forehead back to the bolster if you lifted. And again, arms pressing down like you want to flatten the bolster with your elbows, with your arm bones, pushing, pushing, pushing. It's a little bit of an iso for the lats. All right, and then you can cease and desist. Go back to having the um, palms face each other, but inner elbows might face more up than not. And then from here, bend into your elbows, put your palms together so you've made that little steeple shape over the back of your head. And this one too, I kind of have to shimmy wiggle. I'm going to roll from side to side and walk my elbows in. This all has to happen around my neck and head, so I don't want to get too claustrophobic and like squish my head with my arms, but they're close to my temples. All right, so elbows are bent in order to point the fingers up to the ceiling. And in this same, same, you're going to push the elbows down. Push and push, and forevermore you'll push. And then push more on the right. Oh, and keep pushing on the right, but push more on the left. Push way more on the left and then push right and left and left and right deeply down. And then release that downwards pushing, but keep this prayer position. And then you're going to take a little bit of a side child. So I'm going to lift my head and kind of walk my elbows over towards the right. So again, we're going to go on these slightly different vectors. Just make sure we catch it at a few angles. Again, forehead, elbows, and I'm going to push both elbows down. 
And I might even lift my forehead slightly so that I can really convince my neck this is not for it. All right, soften that off, shimmy to center, forehead up and elbows walk and walk over towards the left, forehead down, and elbows plunge down and push down and plunge down and push down. And then forehead up, elbows walk to center. You can straighten the arms off and we will come on up. All right, so a handful of good exercises there. The main idea being that a lot of us have this habit of elevating the shoulder blades so we correct it with a depression. That's not wrong or bad, but we're putting in an entirely new skill set, which is to actually swoop the shoulder blades to the side. And that's going to ask those rhomboids between the shoulder blades to lengthen. It's going to ask the serratus underneath the shoulder blades and on the side ribs to contract. It's going to ask the pecs to contract. All right. I hope it feels so good. 